I am the one person in the Linus Media Group building who has been using this, the Apple Watch Ultra One, for the last year. So the Short Circuit team thought that I might be a good person to do an unboxing over here and let y'all know what we think of it. I actually saw on Twitter a few days ago, uh, Snazzy, shout out Quinn, was saying that the Watch Ultra 2 is the most premium unboxing experience that Apple has right now. I'm excited to see what's in store. Obviously, we have our watch charging cable here and the watch right over here as well. We'll get into that in a moment. It also comes obviously with the loop. This one is the hook and loop closure trail loop. They have the Alpine loop as well and an ocean loop. I actually use the Alpine on my Apple Watch Ultra One. Really like that, it's broken in nicely, super comfy for day-to-day -day use and I do like the olive green that they have on there. Um, so let's see what the differences are between the Alpine and the trail. So this is the trail loop, just super simple Velcro hook and loop style. It does look like this one's a medium slash large, um, so it should be good for any variety of wrist sizes. I use the large on the Alpine, so this one should be perfectly fine. And boom, right on there. So yeah, having tried the Alpine band with the one and the trail band now with the two, I definitely prefer the Alpine band. I feel like it gives you a little bit more flexibility, but if you're somebody who is, you know, an ultra marathon runner or somebody who's out running trails every day and you need your watch to be securely attached to your wrist, I assume the trail band is gonna work just as well for you there as well. Obviously, when it comes to Apple, you're always looking for a premium unboxing experience. So they, of course, include some fun marketing materials just in case you know, your friends are over and they wanna look at which ultra band they want. It looks like it has a bottier. Wow, three microphone array, crown guard, GPS action button. It's international orange, wow. They've chosen international orange for the visibility of the button, but if you're looking at the button, doesn't that sort of defeat the whole purpose of the button being convenient? Wow. Yep, this is a marketing booklet in your $1,000 watch that you just bought. I love it. So one of the small differences between the Ultra 1 and the Ultra 2 is the weight. So let's take out our handy dandy scale and see what we see. First up, our Watch Ultra 1 comes in at 62 grams. And our Watch Ultra 2 comes in at 62 grams. We're rounding up uh, for whatever reason on this scale. Apparently the Watch Ultra 1 is 61.3 grams. The Watch Ultra 2 is 61.4 grams. But if you're somebody who can tell that difference on your wrist, then I probably owe you dinner. Just to get through our full suite of accessories in the box here, we have the charging cable. Frankly, in 2023, if you don't have one of the multi-device wireless chargers at your bedside, I don't know what you're doing. I have the three-piece one for the iPhone, AirPods, and watch. Works awesome, love it. But if you're not one of the people that has that, you have a sufficiently large charging cable. Look at that, that looks about what, like, Maybe three. yeah, two and a half feet, three feet, something like that, if you need it. It's there, it's nicely braided. I think it's exactly the same one that was in the Ultra One. Doing a quick little side-by-side -side there. Wow, basically the same. Both are 49 millimeters. Both have the same display size and resolution, but the Watch Ultra 2 actually has 50% more brightness. So the Watch Ultra 1 is 2000 nits, Watch Ultra 2 is 3000 nits, and we'll see what that comparison looks like in reality after this message from our sponsor. Thanks to Corsair for sponsoring this video. Are you looking to build a PC but don't know the difference between a 12 pin and a bowling pin? Corsair's IQ Link ecosystem could be the answer. Chain devices using the same simple connector all to a single IQ Link system hub that's magnetically attached to the PC frame. Each of the hub's two ports can handle up to seven connected devices, reducing cabling complexity. Oh, and of course, you can customize the RGB lighting of all your Corsair devices with their IQ software. Check out Corsair's IQ Link smart ecosystem at the link down below. All right. So if you've ever paired a watch before, this should look pretty standard for an Apple user. Set up for myself. And then we just do the, the fun dot exercise here. And it's paired. Wow. It just works. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice. Hi, I'm Siri. We're going I'm voice Siri. four. 
Choose the voice you'd like me to use. None of those are great, to be honest with you, but we're going voice four. So, ooh, yeah. So this is one of the fun things about the Apple Watch Ultra, both one and two, you get your action button. So you can have it set up for your workouts, stopwatch, waypoint, backtrack? I don't even know what that is. Oh, cool. So backtrack is the feature where you can basically track where you've parked or where you came from or wherever else. You know, if you're somebody who, like me, gets lost in parking garages sometimes, this is actually quite helpful. Uh, you can have it set up for dive if you're a diver and flashlight. I think we'll leave it on flashlight. For me, I uh, it might surprise you, but I have it set up for the workout option on my side. Um, super convenient, just hit that one button, boom, select. Um, does it really meaningfully change your life? No, absolutely not. Um, but is it a cool little fun party trick? Yeah, it is. If you spent $1,500 on the watch, you'll want to use it. It's all good. Welcome to Apple Watch. Wow, thank you. So since it's one of the new advertised features and we just set it up in the action button, let's try the flashlight. Boom, flashbang. One of the big advertised features on the Watch Ultra 2 is flashlight boost. Since it has a 3000 nit display, you can now get a little bit more out of the flashlight. The first thing that I did when I opened up the flashlight app on my Watch Ultra 1 was to try to adjust the crown to adjust the brightness, so this makes sense. So just for a quick brightness comparison, we'll throw the flashlights on on both. It's tough to see here. The Watch 2 is, you know, it is significantly brighter. Is it gonna be the difference between seeing something if you're on a, a totally dark trail and not seeing it? I think you'll be fine with 2000 nits, but is it brighter? Yes it is brighter. Another one of the advertised features for this device was Siri on device for offline inquiries. So turn in off the Wi-Fi, and then what do we do? Siri, right? Hey Sean, where is the closest Burger King? And there we go. It is GPS enabled, so if you're somebody who goes off the grid or whatever, you'll still have access to all your GPS data. Um, so I would imagine that's how they're pulling in information about where something is when you're in offline Siri mode. Pretty cool. So one of the other big things they talked about with the new watch was the four core neural engine. So we'll just do a quick little Siri side-by-side -side here of dictation between Watch Ultra 1 and Watch Ultra 2. The quick brown fox jumps over to Lazy Dog. Here's what I found. Is the other one back online? Yeah. Here's what I found. I'm a bit confused. Um, because the Watch Ultra 2 appears to be quite a bit slower in actual dictation than, uh, than my Watch Ultra 1. So it's possible that Siri's just always listening to me and knows my voice at this point, even though I never try to talk to her. Either that, or maybe there is some weirdness in the background where you know the setup process is still happening with the Watch Ultra 2, just because we've set it up during the shoot. It was about 10 minutes ago that we actually did the process. Let's just try like setting a timer, something I would be doing on a day-to-day -day basis while cooking or whatever. Set a timer for 38 minutes. 38 minutes. 38 okay. minutes. Counting down. All right. There's our advertised features. <laughs> Another one of the big upgrades for the new one is that it doubled the storage. So the Watch Ultra 1 had 32 gigs, Watch Ultra 2 has 64. If you just want to bring your watch and not have your phone with you, connect that to your AirPods. Um, that's obviously going to be beneficial for music or podcasts or whatever it is, audiobooks, whatever you're listening to on the trails. And if you're not on the trails and you're just out in the bush and you need something to keep you warm, you can go to LTT store and get this amazing plaid flannel shirt. It's got pockets. Can you see this? has pockets. I need to sell some plaids. Buy a plaid. Another thing that Apple focused on a lot was the double tap gesture. So I believe it's something like this. Oh yeah, okay, here we go. Double pinch to play. Play, double pinch, okay. Well, it might not be playing the music, but the function is working. So that's cool. Look at that. I got your whole house on my wrist, baby. Let's go. Is it worth it? For me, I would honestly say no. <laughs> I wouldn't even recommend you pay money for the first one. It was a very specific situation that brought me to actually buying an Apple Watch Ultra 1, and under most circumstances, I just straight up would never spend that much money on a watch. If you're somebody who cares a lot about having the latest tech and you already have a Watch Ultra, I do not think you need to update to the Watch Ultra 2, to be totally frank. For me, I'm gonna be sticking with my Watch Ultra 1. I think this thing is gonna last a number of years. I mean, I had the Series 4 for probably six or seven years before I moved up to this one. The 
finish on the titanium is a little bit prone to marks. I've seen some other people say that they haven't had that experience, so maybe it's just a me thing. Maybe I'm just super clumsy. Maybe I just smack into door handles more than other people do. It does show some wear, um, but at the end of the day, I think it's a fantastic looking watch. I really do like the finish. Um, there are some great accessories, like I have this Nomad titanium band that is a great match for either the watch one or the watch two. And I wouldn't recommend it for most people, but if you are somebody that does care about this stuff, you are somebody that feels like it's necessary to have the latest and greatest, you're not gonna listen to me anyway. Just go buy the damn thing. Make sure to watch some of the other content that we have on the channel. I think Sarah just did an awesome video about the iPhone 15. Will I be getting one? Absolutely not. Too damn expensive. I still have a tall four max that works perfectly well. But uh, yeah, if you wanna check that out, feel free. Over there, down there, over there, wherever, somewhere.